Pastor? Yes. How are you? I'm great. I'm great, man. Good, Good week. Did you miss me? Uh, I did, man. I wanted you to go with us to the event last week. You yeah. know, Brandon, I took Brandon and Trent with me. Um, I mean, the event you were at was fantastic, so I'm glad you were able to do that. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Sunday real quick. Yesterday? Yeah. I mean, Ron Carter, he's oh. like the patron saint. No, you can't go wrong Church when you got Ron. Seriously, he's like one of us now. It's yeah. almost like people don't know. You know how folks only visit like once every couple months? Some people mm-hmm. will attend. They think he's a worship pastor. They think he's our worship leader. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's Ron. Well, who is it? It's always Ron, right? Yeah. Like No, like he's once here. a quarter, maybe <laughs> yeah, Ron's right. here. And he led a lot for us before you came yeah. as well. Well, he's but, how he's who connected me with you guys. That's exactly right. Vice versa, whatever. That's exactly right. So, yeah, I, I love that man. He's a he's over all the music and worship for the, the state. Georgia Baptist Mission Board. Yeah, so. we are all big fans of Ron around here. Just a good human. And he's a very gifted leader. And a great singer. Great singer. He does really well. In fact, I uh, also did the funeral. With, I had a funeral Saturday. Yep. He did the music for that as well. I know he bailed me out of that one. <laughs> I wondered if it was supposed to be you well, originally. The, the family had asked me to sing, yeah. and I told Tommy and when he asked, I said, because I love the Priestler family. Of course, they're great. They're just, and I was like, I can't. I, I literally can't. I yeah. mean, I'm halfway across the globe. Yeah. And so I, he said, well, who could I call you know, to be able to sing that song? And uh, the song is real high, you know, tenor, it's a big, powerful number. Mm-hmm. I said, Midnight Cry. Yeah. I said, yeah, you, you, gotta, you yeah. call Ron Carter. That's who you call. Yeah. Because he nails it. No, he nailed it. He it was a it. great service. Yeah. And the Priesters are all great. I mean, we know all of them. They know all of us. There's a lot mm-hmm. of Priesters. And... um they're all just wonderful people, man. And so anyway, yeah, it was great to be able to honor yeah. them uh, at the Celebration of Life for Miss Bess. And then um, and then Sunday, yesterday, yeah. having um, Ron lead was good. So the Sunday service was great. I this is the first time in 10 years of me being a worship pastor it, with having him lead where I just haven't had to worry. You really don't. Like, I, I mean, I, I plan it, I talk to him, mm-hmm. and I was like, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Which is probably how it should have been all along. Yeah. But there's it's a lot just of trust. A the, lot the choir of trust. trust him. And I've known Ron for gosh, probably seven or eight years. Yeah. So that relationship goes far beyond you know church on Main. Um, yeah. And he's just as, he was as good of a human before, you know. I knew him in this context. Exactly. So, anyway. But had you been in town, um, yeah, I'd said, hey, come with me to this event. So I got invited to a um, I don't want to call it a conference. It was really just a gathering of people. It wasn't that many people. Mm-hmm. It was like I'm going to say maybe fifty. Folks, um, where was this? It was <laughs> well, you know. Sometimes, <laughs> Kellen, you have to really be willing to suffer. Suffer for Jesus. Yes, when you are in ministry, you know. Sometimes you have to suffer when you're in ministry, and so, you know, people in church like to know that their church staff uh, goes to conferences. It just can't be a better conference than theirs. Absolutely, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Wait, this event—you were almost in, in a third world country. Yeah, we were in the third world country, the difficult location of West Palm Beach, Florida, oh, is man. where this event was. I don't know how you did it. It was hilarious. You know, we were like—I was praying for we you. We were <laughs> right across the bay from Mar-a-Lago. Put that in context. Yeah. It was about a sixty-second drive, so we took it. I said to Brandon and Trent, I asked them to go with me. I think we're near Mar-a-Lago. We mm-hmm. pulled it up. It was one minute from where we were staying. You got to cross a drawbridge, but then yeah. it's right there. Shelby and I were at an event there. Uh, this is before I came here. Um, it was at the. It was at West Palm, out of the place, and so you know you can see Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, you see it right there. Well, I'm standing out yeah. on the balcony of the room that where the event we're at, and I see a helicopter yeah. come by, and I was like, "Oh, I wonder if that's Trump." It gets closer, and I see T R U M P on the side of the helicopter. I was yeah. Like, oh. No, there was security, police. There was all kinds of security yeah. all around. So there's nothing is going to happen, mm-hmm. but they let you drive by and look. I mean, there was a line of cars driving by. Now they're mm-hmm. on, the, on this side of the of the water because it's kind of like I don't know if it's an island or what exactly, but. Anyway, yeah. you, you got to take a bridge to get there. But, it's a, you cross that causeway. Yeah, and yeah. it's like a little drawbridge that actually old school goes up mm-hmm. and down. But um, uh, there were photographers on the other side with these gigantic lenses just on tripods. Just They're waiting on you. Waiting on something. I don't know. Yeah. It, you know what it was? We It was um, Super Tuesday. Oh, okay. And we hadn't yeah. thought about it until we were like, oh, yeah, it's Super Tuesday. Yeah. But anyway, all that to say, it was a great event. You didn't go to a Trump convention. We did not did not see him, did not interact with him. Um, just to clear the air. I've got that. I've got bigger fish to fry yeah. than to meet with uh, Donald Trump. But we are in a situation um, where there have been some churches, mm-hmm. and the congregation is going to be hearing this for the first time right now. Anybody who watches this podcast or listens to it, but 
there are some churches within our relative community that have reached out to us asking if we would consider making them a campus of our Mm -hmm. church. I have been in a multi-site church before, but honestly, what we have responded to them is saying is um, maybe is the best answer we'll give you right now. We need to spend some time thinking through this. Yeah, sure. Because quite honestly, um, there's a lot of multi-site models that either don't work and they create more problems than mm-hmm. existed before the multi-site model, or there are multi-site models that look successful, but I don't believe them to be very biblical. Hmm. And so I don't want to be... Like if a church is is struggling and they go to a larger church and say, well, you make us a campus. Well, clearly that smaller church must have had a problem that they were trying to navigate. Yeah, sure. Well, if 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 I, as the senior pastor, have not put the right amount of thought into this, I could very easily make the problem worse that they're dealing with. <laughs> yeah. So I don't want to well, do that. Yeah, I mean, context is everything, mm-hmm. you know, and essentially the most, it would be easy for us as a large church. And I've seen this with large churches. Mm-hmm. You kind of get the Messiah complex mm-hmm. to say, you know, we're here to save the day, mm-hmm. do it our way or what, you know, and that just, it yeah. just doesn't work. No, I've seen literally, yeah, I know guys, I have friends who wanted to go multi-site so bad and they were, you know, the senior pastor at whatever church and literally say to a smaller church, this is not a merger. This is a takeover. Mm-hmm. And that is not a win-win. No, that is a win. That's really a lose-lose. Uh-huh. I, I don't like that. I think it's um, well. Not only is it not kind, I just don't think it's wise. Yeah. What What I want is if we come together in a partnership with another church, and they essentially become a campus, they mm-hmm. become a location, however you want to phrase it, then we've got to work together. Yeah. So, like for example, what I've said is, um. I, I don't want to just come in and say, for example, we'll pay off that church's debt. We're not doing that. We don't have that money. Wouldn't to be do wise. That. It wouldn't yeah. be smart. And you know, there's a lot of conversations, a lot of questions. So anyway, this event that we were invited to in um, the third world country, third of, world West country Palm Beach. of West Palm Beach, Florida. Just reiterate that point. It needs to be a lot of prayer. Yeah. yeah if you're going to visit there, um, it was funny. We pulled up at a stoplight. To our right was a brand new Lamborghini. To our left was a brand new uh, Rolls Royce. And you're in like a Ford Focus. We were like in some little <laughs> Ford rental car. It was hilarious. So, you know, you got to rev the engine, you know, like bring it on. Boy. Get those hamsters Boys, going. What you got? Yeah. Um, but no, it was a good And event. you being a car guy, that gave you such a complex, didn't it? Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. I was just like, I'm going to, I'll take them with the light. They're yeah. going to get me to the, they're going to beat me to the next light. But anyway, so it was good. And we spent a lot of time with, it was a small group of pastors and churches from honestly around the country, Mm -hmm. all with the same question and desire. We were, I think, the only church that was not already multi-site. Okay. So it was perfect. We were able to ask all sorts of questions. With a lot of varying Mm -hmm. situations. Yeah. Yeah, That's good. And it gave us a lot of relationships and content. There's a couple churches we saw that were doing a brilliant job with Mm. it. And so we were like, man, this is what we needed to hear. We needed to hear these pros and cons. And the ultimate goal that I have it's. It, I think as a pastor, as a Christian, you have to go into it with a gospel focus. Yeah. So you and I were talking a minute ago before we started pressing record just now, and um, you know, there's one model that we saw where the people that church will only focus all of their attention, missions, evangelism, outreach, to the particular part of the state where they are. Mm-hmm. So that they said is to the exclusion of supporting missionaries, church planters in any other part of the world, domestic or international. Well, I don't like that model. Sure. And, you know, when you asked me why a minute ago, I said it's because um, when we see Matthew 28, go into all the world and make disciples, teaching them and baptizing, then you see that's Matthew 28. You go to Acts 1-8, the command from Christ as well, go into all the world, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. If I'm going to teach that from the pulpit... Which John Welburn, by the way, speaking of Acts 1-8, mm-hmm. John Welburn preached about that. That's exactly uh, his passage. So, yeah, yeah it, him, go back go back a week and you yeah, can find 100%. that. That was a great sermon. to teach on missions because we're going to be partnering with him. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much what I always ask any guest preacher to preach on. So every time we have Danny Aiken, he is the world's expert on missions. So I ask him to do missions. When we had John Welburn teach on missions. So it'd be difficult to teach about missions, specifically Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth, 
and then say, but we're not going to do that. Yeah. So yeah. that's what I'm saying from credibility standpoint. Mm. Now, you and I both know that if you're part of the um, Baptist Convention, you give to this collective yeah, mission. cooperative program. It's called the Cooperative yeah. Program, CP Giving. And, but honestly, that's really meant for smaller churches that would not be able to, on their own, fully support missionaries. Sure. We're all aware of churches that run several hundred to several thousand, but that's the extreme exception. That's like not yeah. even 1% of mm -hmm. churches. The overwhelming majority of churches yeah. in America never reach 100. Well, the statistic that LifeWay Research put out, 80% of churches in America, not just Baptist churches, churches in America, mm -hmm. are 200 people or less. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. I think I saw something like 3% will see 500. Mm -hmm. So we're all aware of the bigger churches, but that's 3% or less. Yeah, sure. So um, a church that's larger, uh, if you have the ability to, to do more for missions, that's where my heart is. Yeah. Now, that's not to say that someone can't have a more streamlined vision. Well, yeah, and I mean, like you and I were talking about, I think it's, you know, it's easy to to blame, I heard this said a long time ago, it's easy to blame difficult decisions on clear vision. Mm -hmm. you know. And, and we've had that same problem in different areas, mm -hmm. right? There are things that we don't we don't feel called to do or uh, that the Lord has you know, laid out for us to do as a church from a missional standpoint, from programming standpoint, from stylistic, you know, music, worship, whatever you want to call it, preaching standpoint. Like, okay, for instance, you don't feel called to preach topically. Mm -hmm. Well, you have a very clear vision on that. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy to blame a difficult decision mm -hmm. to, you know, what style to preach doesn't mean one's better or wrong or yeah. right, whatever. But you have a very clear vision, so you're easy, yeah. it's easy to blame that. Yeah. So I, I have a lot of respect for people who can't because, man, yeah. we both know of a bunch of people who are just throwing stuff at the wall and That's seeing right. what sticks. Yeah. Um, and so like you, I share that concern of, okay, our biblical mandate is to go and do all the world and yeah. preach the gospel. So, so without, you know... Without context, yeah, I, I can't, I don't know. But well, at the end of the day, I think, you know, what works for someone in South Florida or work, what works for somebody in Southern California or Montana or yeah. South Carolina does not work in Georgia and vice versa. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Col local, local context matters. But we learned a lot and we're excited about yeah, it. Yeah, that's so we're awesome. Gonna, we'll keep navigating the waters with the churches that have asked us, and they've asked us suddenly and recently. Yeah. Um, if we it, consider it. That's been my experience with, you know, the Lord moving in your life. It's when something comes to your doorstep, it's rarely something you've manipulated or it's never something you manipulated to get there if it's of God. Uh, it's rarely something that you have, you know, networked your way or kind of found a roundabout way to do it. It's always something that has been in your heart, been in your mind, something you prayed about but just didn't see a feasible yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. And God's like, there you, go. there you go. But the beauty of it is we get to trust him with the results. We get to trust yeah. him with the process and to say, I mean, God, whatever you want to do. And in the in our process, it allows us opportunities like you guys had to go and learn from people who are doing it really well. Doing a really good job. You know? yeah. I, mean, I hated some, to miss you guys. Well, it was good. We took a time. I mean, honestly, I took yeah. pages and pages of notes, and yeah. we're going to be talking about it some more. You'll be in that conversation. And then, um, yeah, I mean, so it was a good week. We had a construction meeting mm -hmm. uh, Friday, I believe that was. You were part of that from Z during, yeah. uh, through Zoom. Um, we're still working on getting everything in our worship center mm -hmm. re repaired. I mean, there's a lot of damage, a lot yeah. of things falling apart. Most people wouldn't realize. <laughs> but it's like the place is disintegrating. Yeah. So we're having to yeah. figure out how to restore. It seems like the firm we're looking at has got a, got a concept figured out. So. And then from there, we'll yeah. look at the aesthetics. It's cool. I mean, just kind of the overarching theme of both of our weeks, you know, we're, you and I are separate sides of the globe. Mm. Um, I missed that conference with you guys because I was in Barcelona, mm -hmm. Spain, and uh, my wife was working with an organization called Greater Europe Mission. And just like, you know, the example you gave, they are hyper-focused on Western Europe. Yeah. And that is where they are called to, you know, send missionaries. And it's not a, they're not affiliated with any kind of denomination or anything like that. And so it was cool. It was cool to see how God is at work outside of the church on main bubble, um, outside of the, you know, Western hemisphere bubble, <laughs> outside yeah. of the North yeah, American exactly. bubble. So it's, yeah. you know, same God, same kingdom different things he's doing in different yeah. lives and different contexts. And it just, it gave me a whole new appreciation. And I think people get this when they go on short, short term mission trips. Uh, even though what I went on wasn't necessarily a mission trip. It was, it, 
I just got for a missions organization. Yeah, and I got to hear how. I mean, man, I, I don't. I haven't told you this. Shelby and I were eavesdropping on a conversation at a cat little cafe that we were having lunch at, and overheard this. You know, girl, she's probably in her mid thirties, talking to a co- obviously a college age, you know, German expat mm. in Barcelona. And man, when you've been around Christian world for long enough, you you have a lingo, right? Mm-hmm. And so I picked up on words like community and what what's God doing in this season and yeah. all those, <laughs> you know, all the, like the. There's a guy That's named funny. John Acuff who wrote a book like stuff Christians like. It's hilarious, <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's all those little things. And so I told Shelby, I was like, I'm 100 percent sure she's a missionary. Yeah. And so they left, and as they were getting up, I said, I'm sorry, you know, I was eavesdropping, eavesdropping, but I couldn't help but notice, like, oh, do you work with a mission organization? What are you here with? So, man, come to find out, she's completely self-funded huh. from a church, her sending church in Oregon. Oh, yeah. Uh, she went over to Barcelona to play soccer. She's doing sports missions. Oh. She also leads worship for this group of athletes that That's is cool. just learning about Jesus. Mm. And she got to help me understand, help Shelby and I both understand the church culture there, the lack of church culture, like what God is doing, yeah. you know, among Christians and spiritual Christians there. And yeah. so we're going to, you know, see how we can partner with her. Like as our worship, she said, she, I said, what do you need? She said, I need a, just a portable sound system. I was like, dude, that's 600 bucks. Yeah. Like, that's cool. Yeah. We can figure that out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's, I'm working on that this week. Just that's to, awesome. so just it's, ship it to yeah, her there. yeah. Like I said, I mean, it's just, it's just God at work mm-hmm. all over the place. I and mean, we're just. Yeah, I was going to say, we wouldn't even need to ship it to her there. Most of the stuff that we get is shipped here from, from there. there. <laughs> yeah. She'll have a shorter shipping time. <laughs> yeah. It's like across the street. Yeah. But it's, you <laughs> know. In Germany or something. <laughs> yeah. Exactly right. But yeah, man, it's, it's just God, God doing his thing. And it, it's, I've said this before from stage the Lord is already doing his work and he, in, he is inviting us to be a part of it. Mm-hmm. We don't start it. We don't manufacture Okay, but it. let's talk about this. All right. Because this is something exactly that I'm having conversations with some other church. So here's what happened. Back last fall, um, God has been, to use some of your Christianese, our church, Church on Main, is in a season where things are, are healthy and strong mm-hmm. and God is really blessing. We're seeing professions of faith. We're seeing yeah. tons of baptism. A lot of People unity. joining. It's incredible. There's a lot of energy and excitement. It's been a lot of work to get to this point, yeah. but God is good and... So I reached out to our uh, uh, local associational leader, mm-hmm. and I said, hey, are there churches in the community that you know of that are struggling? In Gwinnett, Walton county Yeah, within yeah. a 20-minute radius, mm-hmm. roughly. But in that radius, just in the Baptist world, there's 140-some churches. Good grief. Well, a buckle of Bible Belt, baby. Exactly right. So we, he connected me with, I don't know, five churches, I think it was, yeah. maybe six. And these are churches that have been struggling. He asked, would you like to meet with Brian at Church on Main? He's offering just to sit down and help you think through if there's any advice or ideas. Only because I'm in this community. I've been here for eight and a half years. And there are some things that we have figured out. And there are some things that we stumped our toe on. (laughs) And I was like, hey, let me... Meet with them. And Words of advice say, and the experience of the unwise. That's right. Here's some here's some mistakes that that's, we made. That's my new definition of wisdom. Yeah. It's words of advice and the experience of the unwise. That it, it helps. <laughs> yeah. One of my mentors has told me multiple times. People say um, experience is the best teacher, but actually other people's experience <laughs> yeah. is the best teacher. Right. right. Yeah. And I'm like, that's so good. So I'm just seeking knowledge to keep yeah. the mistakes fewer. Well, anyway. I began meeting with these churches one-on-one, some of them in groups, and we've come up with some ideas to keep those churches from going under mm-hmm. because I don't want to see the community they're in lose the gospel witness. Yeah, sure. And then suddenly their church becomes a gas station or a mosque or something like that. So um, that's what led to it. Well, what I'm noticing is when a church is unhealthy, it's very similar to when a person is unhealthy. I'll give you an example. Let's say you are rushed to the hospital. You've got, I don't know, you're about to have a heart attack, Mm -hmm. right? Or you're having a heart attack. Well, when you're talking to the doctor and you're in the hospital room and they've got you hooked up to all the things they hook you up to, he's not going to talk to you about maybe an ingrown hair that you have on your ear, right? Like that's just not, we're not even going to have that conversation. He's going to talk to you about this is life and death. Mm -hmm. We'll talk later about eat less donuts. We'll talk later about let's increase your step count. Right now we're going to talk about we need to put a stent in your heart and we're doing surgery, right? We're going to change your heart valve. Well, this is life or death. When you're healthy and things are great, 
you can have fun conversations, what vacations you want to go on or joining a gym membership or something mm-hmm. like that. Seems like churches are the same way. When a church is unhealthy, we're not having fun conversations. Yeah. We're talking about life or death, stay alive. A lot of tension. A lot of tension, a yeah. lot of infighting. And often what I'm seeing, what I what's the case, is it's infighting that causes the decline hmm. and it's infighting that sees it out to a complete collapse. If you can bring unity, if you can bring some kind of um, agreement, but the problem is the churches that I'm meeting with we're not talking with them about mission work or planting churches or supporting yeah. church planters. We're talking with them about keeping the doors open. Keeping the doors open. Yeah. And so we're having to have some very difficult conversations. And I've brought in some of our team, our finance office to help. And um and and it's helping to kind of tread water, but you can only tread water for so mm-hmm. long. Our church, we're seeing it when we're healthy, we're talking about can we take on more missionaries? Can we help plant more churches? And yeah. so the conversations I'm having, like you talk about the lady you bumped into, and she just needs a sound system. And you know, you know full well, you can just say, done. And you can help her with that need. Because we have the budget here. We have the space here. Mm-hmm. We have the support. Even if it wasn't in your budget. Yeah, there are people I could go to. You can go to people yeah, in the congregation. But, hey, would you be open to it? Yeah. They say, oh, yeah, in a heartbeat. Yeah. So we're, you're able to have fun conversations mm-hmm. when think when you're healthy, whether as a person or as an organization, as yep. a church. So these are the things that we're trying to help churches that are struggling, so that they can get back to the fun. Yeah, you know why ministry is and can be fun. So anyway, that's awesome, man. Yeah, a lot of I love these kind of weeks that are exhausting, that are mentally stimulating, and at the same time just give you a lot new new air in your lungs. Mm-hmm. You know because. Uh, for me, at least, it's it's the Lord has really kind of breathed some fresh air f- to gain some different perspective on what I do in ministry. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know, not to, I don't know, not to overly be dramatic, be overly dramatic about it, but it's just, I don't know, I'm just realizing like, man, time's short. Time's short. And I'm not this yeah. doom and gloom end times kind of guy, but it's like, there's a lot of stuff that we're fighting about that really doesn't matter. And there's yeah. stuff like even trivial stuff that I'm worried about that really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And so what does? And that's what I want to focus on. That's the stuff, you know, I mean, I'm 33 years old. I got a seven and a four year old and been married for 10 years. And I look back, I'm like, gosh, that went just like that. Mm -hmm. How much more so? (laughs) What I find is the older you get, the faster time flies. The days are long, but the years are short. It goes by fast, man. The older I get. And I mean, it's like you turn around and your kids have moved out because they went to college. Yeah. You know, and even if they come back, everyone jokes they're like a boomerang. They come back, it's still different. Yeah, you know. But I know at some point we got to talk about the sermon. Yeah, you're right. Do we our should. recap. Anyway. You brought notes. Now we're all emotional. Well, because I didn't, I wasn't here for the sermon. Oh, okay. So I watched it on the YouTube's. Oh, okay. Which you can do. Just click subscribe, and you can get <laughs> <laughs> the sermon every week. Uh, so yeah, I made some made some notes. You know, for as long as you preach, I boiled it down to this: five things. Yeah. So what does that tell you about how long you're preaching? Just give me the notes next time. Come I'll on, walk pal. Out. I'll say it in 10 seconds and be done. <laughs> if it's any consolation, uh, most of the songs we sing are about like one, maybe two things. Yeah, it's so, that way. Yeah. We could probably condense this church service to about 15 minutes and people still not remember half no, of it. No, if we condense it to 15 minutes, half of our crowd would never see church. <laughs> That's true, because they'd be late. <laughs> <laughs> they'd be late. They'd get here halfway through the service. Yeah, anyway. That's uh, I mean. Speaking of service time. Not you all. Not no, you not who you. are watching. You all. We don't mean... And not anybody that you know either. These, <laughs> so, <laughs> these, these are other churches. Other churches we heard about, yeah. Uh, these are among the faithful. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, man, Mark 10... Uh, we hinted at it last week after a pretty difficult topic of divorce, divorce and, and remarriage yeah. and marriage and all that kind of stuff. We we thought we'd get something lighter, and to, to some extent we did. We got to the passage where Jesus is We're, angry. He get, he's getting mad. Man. Yeah, he's getting it literally mad. says he was indignant. Yeah, you know, we talk start talking about children. Yeah. Like, oh, you know, rainforests and unicorns and rainbows and no nah, man this is a not passage a of, and it's funny because this is another example of a passage that you think you understand what it means and you have no clue and you have you are yep. it's like nope this is about something you don't realize this is um you want to go to heaven this is the passage yeah it there's what i'm learning about jesus's life and ministry it's never what's on the surface um of what you're getting like mm. and that's the beauty of of scripture you can read it you can just take a one pass thing and you can walk away with some really good stuff oh, yeah but then when you dig, 
that's why I, I, I love what Scripture teaches. The Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. Mm-hmm. And it's you know, I've known people who follow Jesus for a long, long time, 50, 60 plus years, and say they can, they've can they read the same passage over and over and got something new every time. 100%. Well, yeah. this is, you know, to what you were mentioning earlier, this is why I'm so committed to expositional mm-hmm. teaching where we go verse by verse by verse because I can show, like I did yesterday at the sermon, um, hey, this comes right out of the conversation that Jesus was having about divorce and marriage. Yeah. You know, the Pharisees ask about, when is it okay to get divorced? He responds with, here's the purpose of marriage. You need to, you're asking the wrong question. Mm-hmm. And then that goes right into now this conversation about children. And well, you've got something on your iPad there. Would you mind underlining it for me? Yeah. <laughs> Just to be sure. I appreciate the pin. It well, wasn't working for me. Go watch yesterday. the sermon. It's an inside joke. I had to charge it between services. Well, he had two pins, and then I guess it didn't register that it has to be Bluetooth connected. Yeah, well, so there's a whole system over. here that frustrated me yesterday. <laughs> it was no big deal. I even tried to yeah. use my finger, but it kept changing the slides. I, so I was like, oh, forget it. <laughs> I saw that. I could tell. It's like, I'm sort of aggravated, but it's kind of my fault. I'm going to keep on going. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let's it's just kind move of my on. Fault. Uh, yeah. yeah, so people are bringing the babies to Jesus. Yeah. Mark chapter 10. All seems fine and dandy, and yet you have these apostles who are just angry. They, they, they're angry wrong. Angry mm-hmm. about it. And, man, you said something yesterday, uh, once again, that just harkened back to a couple weeks ago where the disciples, even though they've been hanging out with Jesus, the Son of God, whom they believed was the Son of God, at least one of them being Peter, Mm -hmm. still let the culture define their theology. Happens all the time. And you went went into that a little bit yesterday of Mm -hmm. just how children were viewed as, you know, Essentially, a nuisance. A nuisance. Yeah. Uh, what is it? <laughs> Children to be seen, not heard. Yeah. I heard that a lot growing up. Yeah. Um, you know, just off to the side, over, over and away. Yeah. Because um, they were just a bother. And here's Jesus saying, absolutely not. And once again, just proof that the kingdom of God is upside down. Yeah. First will be last. Last will be first. You know, you pure in heart, you'll see God. It's the pride that keeps you. And then once again, there's Jesus saying, "What do you think is normal?" Is not, and it's the exact opposite in my kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When one of the things that I was trying to get across yesterday, I, it's only four verses. Mm-hmm. I mean, verses thirteen through sixteen. It's four verses, and usually people read through this thinking that the point is that um, Jesus loves children. Well, yeah, he loves children. But that's not yeah. the point of the passage. Oh, Jesus yeah. loves little children. So the point of the passage is. Um, uh, if you want to go to heaven, first of all, the kingdom of God belongs to the children. That would have been a slap in the face to what they understood, what they had been taught. Mm-hmm. You know, they would have they would have believed that the uh, the kingdom of God was whatever the Pharisees say it is. And again, when we say Pharisee today, we have changed the definition. Mm-hmm. So in modern culture, the word Pharisee only ever means extreme hypocrite. Yeah. Right. In that culture, it had a different definition. Back then, the Pharisee was the religious leader that they weren't, there was no negative stigma. I mean, these were the men who had been to years and years of theological training, studying yeah. and memorizing They're God's respected. word. They were highly respected yeah. and highly regarded. And um, th- so, for the Pharisees to say one thing and Jesus to say another, it was extremely countercultural. Mm. But, and undoubtedly caused confusion mm. with people who followed Jesus and yet. This is all they had known. Yeah, so. yeah. So he that's what I said yesterday. He he confronted the culture and he fixed it. And yeah. it wasn't just a theological culture, it was a social culture mm-hmm. as well. So You you brought up the point yesterday. Uh, the scripture passage says, um, what is it? Uh, and they were bringing children to him that he might test him, but the disciples rebuked them. That rebuke was not just, hey, can we hold off? Like, Maybe not now. It yeah. was get away it was hostile. right now. Get yeah. out of here. You are wasting Jesus' time. Yeah. I mean, that's how they would have approached, and that's why they got confronted aggressively. It tends to be the story with mm-hmm. them. Yeah. You don't see the apostles begin to fully get it. And when you're reading the New Testament, you read the Gospels, you read the rest of the New Testament, the apostles all throughout the Gospels get it wrong almost 100% of the time. Mm-hmm. And to the point of at the cross, which Jesus had been telling them was going to happen, he's by himself. There's like yeah, a handful they, they of people. Left. That's it. They're gone. The 12 yeah. are gone. Uh, by that point, uh, Judas had already hung himself, and so you got the, el- the remaining 11. Of the 11, one sticks around. as another one that denies him, th- Peter, mm-hmm. three times. Yep. 
they don't, it doesn't click. Yeah. John is the only one at the cross. At the cross. Yeah. It doesn't start to click finally for the apostles until after the resurrection, mm -hmm. when they see, interact with, and in Thomas's case, touched yep. the risen Jesus, that's when everything changed. That's when they go, the resurrection changed everything for the apostles. That's when they were willing to die for their faith. Well, I've got to, I've got to see so much hope in that for me, you know, and for anybody else who's watching for you, it's, you can still get it wrong and allow Jesus to correct it. So you can get it wrong and allow the grace of God yeah. to cover. And and you're you're not done for. You know you're not you're not wasted away. Jesus is saying, "Here, let me put you back on track and keep going," just like he did to Peter. You know? So I know yesterday you were on an airplane coming back mm -hmm. during church while you know, but I don't know what portion you got to watch. When I first got up, I spent several minutes talking to the congregation about worship in general. And one of this is before the sermon. Yeah. One of the things that I said was, you know, we several hundred of us in here, we're all gathered in here. You know, you see people standing, singing, mm -hmm. um, eyes closed, eyes open, whatever. People are worshiping. And I know that sometimes the world misunderstands this. The world says, Oh, you call yourself a Christian, and yet I know that you have things in your life that aren't aren't Christ like. Mm -hmm. You know, you said some words you shouldn't have said. You you had a response or a reaction you shouldn't have had. You lost your temper. You said a cuss word. You, whatever it may be, anything. And then they come and see Christians gathered on Sunday singing with their arms or hands held high and just really engaging with the music, and they go, yep. yeah, you're hypocrites. The world has it backwards. Mm -hmm. We don't worship on a Sunday and singing and all that because we're trying to act like we've got our life together. We're worshiping because we know that we, we don't, don't. <laughs> yeah. and we are. We're yeah. there for the one who is. Yeah. We're there for God. Worship, it, to if I could put it in the most simple terms, is what I tell the choir and orchestra all the time. Worship is exchanging everything wrong about us for everything right about God. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a supernatural connection that happens during worship, whether it's singing, whether it's giving, whether it's reading your Bible, whether mm -hmm. it's prayer, there's a supernatural connection that happens where you can, you cut, you surrender, yeah. you surrender. That's what worship is. It's yeah. surrender. It's saying, yeah. and not my will, but yours. I can't do it, but you can. Yeah. And I'm able you to know? say, look, I know that I messed up yeah. when I did this thing last week. I know that I shouldn't have done this or done that, whatever. I mean, I know that I messed up. But I'm here right now to be reminded that there's a great God mm -hmm. who deserves my worship. He's mm -hmm. earned it. He's worth it. So yeah. um, anyway, so back to this yep. passage. You know, This was an, also a passage that really I pointed this out briefly. I would have loved another 30 minutes to walk through some more passages. But um, God's unique uh, uh, love for children, for mm -hmm. babies in particular. Yep. And uh, I thought that was just really cool, bringing in... Um, the example of David with his son that died with his sin with Bathsheba, because David sinned with Bathsheba, compared to David's response when his son Absalom died. Yep. You know, very big difference. What's the difference? The one was a baby. It's he a whole different conversation. Was. He knew instantly. Yeah. So there is this, it seems to be very clear in Scripture that those who die as an infant go to heaven, mm -hmm. you know, and it leads to a lot of doctrinal conversations. You know, there, There's a beautiful uh, explanation of that. Uh, Mike will link in the show notes from Al Mohler, mm. uh, the president of Southern mm. Seminary up in Louisville, Kentucky. Brilliant mind. Incredibly and, brilliant. Man, he, he and Danny Aiken mm. uh, had an article written about this, and I remember having this conversation with uh, Trent, I believe, mm. about you know, children going to heaven, yeah. and especially babies, mm -hmm. and how you can rest assured that Scripture teaches yeah. that it's not just a you know, pie in the sky. We're just doing this, feel good about ourselves. Right. Like when, you know, somebody dies and they're a really awful person say, man, you see them again one day. Mm -hmm. eh, mm -hmm. may, not by the fruit of their life, but you know, anyway, that yeah. funerals are hard for that reason for people that do what we do. But Very different, um, yeah. anyway, we'll link that in the show notes. So if you want to check that out, that's a really good theological explanation. Yeah. He goes through a ton of scripture to support mm -hmm. it that we don't have time for right now. Right. Uh, and it, he's a very trusted Trust oh, for sure. a voice There's on no this. Uh, yeah. You said something yesterday. Um, well, I mean, the scripture says it. You know, permit the children to come to me. This is verse, end of verse fourteen. Uh, Do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Mm -hmm. And he's not talking about babies. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the attitude. Yep, the, the way they the come way to me. they come. Yeah. Because you said this uh, yesterday. I thought it was so good. The kids can't earn their way to heaven. They come to Jesus simple, 
trusting and completely dependent. Mm-hmm. Completely dependent. That's right. Because they they can't, like a child is dependent on his mother for milk. Yep. Can't do anything for themselves. There's nothing a baby can do for themselves but cry. Yeah. That's how we are when we come to God. Yeah. We can't. And that's the point I made, I think, I don't know if it's first or second sermon. A baby cannot feed herself, clothe herself. If she gets sick, she can't take care of herself. Mm -hmm. She can't even communicate effectively what she needs, a baby. And so you have to have someone greater than you as a baby to provide what you need, whether yeah. it's food, clothing, you name it. And that's how we have to be with God. We we bring nothing to the equation. Mm-hmm. We don't bring anything to I mean, Somebody, it's a partnership. I'll never forget when uh, we found out we were pregnant with Ellington. We had tried for three years to have a baby and uh, just struggled with infertility. And a friend of mine, older pastor friend, he said, you will never understand the love of God until you have a child. Mm. And I was like, yeah, that sounds awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure... And doggone it, he's right. That's all right. You know, it's and truth. the minute I, I remember Ellington being so, she had some, uh, she had jaundice really bad. She had dairy, soy, gluten allergies, all this kind of stuff. So just crying constantly. Yeah. And it's a guessing game. It's a guessing game to figure out as a parent, yeah. like what's wrong. Shelby could only feed her for so long. Yeah. And then it's just started all over again, not sleeping. None of us are sleeping. Our pets' heads are falling off. <laughs> like it's just, it was, yeah. that didn't really happen. It's a dumb and dumber reference. Yeah. Um, but just, you know, it was pandelirium. Yeah. And so you're just, and I, man, I was, I will never forget this. We live in Grapevine, Texas at 1509 Brookwood Drive. Uh, and I sat at the top of the steps and Ellie's just crying, crying, crying in her room. And we're trying to get, just get her to sleep. We have yeah. done everything that we could do. And I remember just praying in that moment, like, God, please, please help her get some sleep. Cause I know Shelby was trying to rest. It was awful. And, in that moment, I will never forget this man. The Spirit of God spoke to my heart and said, you can't fix her, but I know what you need. Mm-hmm. And man, that was such a good moment for me that m- me as Ellington's dad, I could do anything for her that she probably could have w- wanted. If she mm-hmm. said, you know, can I have a Coca-Cola? Yeah, mm-hmm. and go down and get it. If she wanted cereal, yeah. I can get- mm-hmm. But in that moment, she didn't know what she wanted. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know what she wanted. Yeah. And how much more does our Father in Heaven know what we need and give us exactly what we need, yeah. even when we don't know what we need? You yeah. know, yeah. I, I took so much comfort in that. Well, that's a good example. I mean, we, for example, so our daughter had colic yeah. when she was a baby. And if you've ever dealt with a colicky child, there's nothing you can do that, and it's not even a crying, it's a screaming. Mm-hmm. And you're trying everything as a parent. Blood curdling. But it's similar to how we are with God. I mean, w- if you're willing to cry out with God, cry out to God, He wants He wants you to have what you need. Now mm-hmm. it may be different than what you want, right? So what? Yeah, this you is not a want. prosperity gospel message. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So what you yeah. are wanting could often be very different than what you need. But when mm-hmm. we cry out to God, He cares for us, and that was, you know, a bit of the point Jesus was making here that the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. The baby mm-hmm. comes to Him, and is trusting and quiet and calm and receiving, de- you know, as a complete dependent of whatever Jesus would give. Yeah. That's how we're supposed to be when we come to God. But so. Beautifully bringing this home is what you said in your third takeaway that Jesus wants people to be brought to him. And just as, you know, you read in verse 13, uh, you know, that, pe- that people, what is it? And they were bringing children to him so that he might touch them. Mm-hmm. Um, people wanted their babies blessed. You know, you get the mental image of people, you know, the Pope kissing babies or mm-hmm. what they want the blessing of the Pope, you know, for mm-hmm. just as we pray for our children to be healthy and, and make good friends and make good choices and have good experiences and, you know, for them to be well rounded people, for God to protect them and keep them. In the same way, Jesus wants us to bring people to Him. Mm-hmm. And man, I thought you tied it in beautifully with just this emphasis on evangelism. Mm hmm. That least, we don't have to have it all figured out. Yeah, we don't. You know what you said about worship yesterday, and then again today. Like, I'm just, I'm just a beggar who found some bread, and now I'm trying to tell everybody else where I got it. Mm. You know, and that's that's what Jesus wants from us is to to bring people to Him, uh, so that He can touch them, so that He can meet the need in their life, so that He can heal them of whatever's going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, man, I just thought once again, like this passage is not what you think it's about. Mm-hmm. It's about people coming to know Jesus. Yeah, Jesus wants people brought to Him, and we see that in Scripture too. Go into the world and make disciples. Go get mm-hmm. people, bring them to Me. 
Um, go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the ends of the earth. Go get people, bring them to me. I mean, yeah. he went to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit. So now we all have access to the power of God to take the gospel to anyone. Mm -hmm. Now, it, to be interestingly obvious, it's easier to take the gospel to someone in a third world country because I think it's easier to, um, there's no embarrassment, there's no shame. If you were to try to take the gospel to your next door neighbor and they reject you, it can be embarrassing. Yeah, someone they see you a, cussing yeah, out in the driveway when oh, your yeah, lawnmower true. breaks. <laughs> yeah. But if you go to some third world country and, you, and they reject you, you're never gonna see them again. Yeah, sure. I mean, after the next moment, you won't mm -hmm. see them ever again. It's harder to, to take the gospel to people that you know, family members, yeah. whatever, but um, that is responsibility that we have. So we try to put together a soft way for people to do that. I brought it up yesterday. Mm -hmm. Just invite them to church for Easter. It's a super yep. easy way. Easteronmain.com. Easteronmain.com. We got the prayer walk that we're trying to get coordinated. Trent's doing a good job yeah. on that. So there's a lot of opportunity here. We just need to be be willing to do our part. Yeah, Palm Sunday. Um, you come to church Palm Sunday. We're having a multi-gen worship experience. Kids, students, all in the choir loft uh, for our 9 o'clock service, mm -hmm. uh, singing, Hosanna, bless us, he who comes in the name of it. It'll be a great day. And after church, uh, we're inviting all of you, all of us, uh, to prayer walk in your neighborhoods. And I mean, you live out in the sticks. Mm -hmm. So the you walk in your neighborhood and it's like to the end of work. your driveway, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> which would be good. I mean, pray every house. But yeah. we have an option for you as well. So you can go to easteronmain.com, .com, easteronmain.com, uh, and just click on prayer walk in your neighborhood. It's right there at the top of the page. You'll see uh, Easter on Main, Prayer Walk, and then our Church on Main website. So just click that, and it gives you instructions. There's a nice video from Pastor Trent just explaining all of that. This is the first time we're doing it, mm -hmm. uh, so it's a big, big deal. Yeah. Um, you can pre-order your T-shirt there, uh, all kind of good stuff. And then, of course, that kicks off Holy Week. Um, so the 27th, we're having a church-wide family night of worship. So we typically do dinner Wednesday nights and have a programming for all age groups. We're still doing that. We're still going to have dinner. I want you to come eat, but then we're going to stay in the uh, dining hall for anybody above students uh, for a family night of worship. If you want to keep your kids in there, we're keeping our kids in there. I think it'd be awesome. Uh, but if they just can't sit still and you need to take them to children's program, we have some alternate children's programming and student programming for them on that night. But uh, we got some prayer prompts and mm -hmm. you're going to pray with your table. Um, so sit with people you don't know. Um, yeah, we've got some real cool stuff planned for that. And then Good Friday. Uh, we're doing more services that week than sure we do in a month. Yeah. Uh, Good Friday service at 7 o'clock in the worship center. Um, that's just a service where we set our hearts and minds on the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. Uh, we have a beautiful service uh, that we'll be doing there uh, that will feature our worship ministry, and Br Pastor Brown will be bringing a message. Uh, probably about a 50, 55-minute service. Um, so it'll be, it'll be really, really great. Those services are always so special. Yeah. Uh, and then we look forward to Easter Sunday. Sunday's coming uh, 9 and 11, 15. Our normal service times, mm -hmm. but no life groups. Mm -hmm. No, no. Uh, we'll need the parking. That's why. Yeah. People often say, why are we canceling Sunday school? Because it'll be packed. It's yeah. going to be Easter Sunday, and um, you got cars coming and going. You got people who don't really, they're not normally navigating. Yep. And I mean, it's not just us. Every church in America is going to be way mm -hmm. more packed than they are normally. Yeah, typically a 50% increase in attendance. Yeah. I mean, we. Isn't that wild? Yeah. We see it. You said what, 50? 50%. 50 yeah. 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 It's and it's big, and you may never see them again, not till next Easter. Yeah. You know, but. Uh, we want to serve them, get the gospel, yep. tell them. So, and we got fun. a cool new Easter tradition we're starting this year: our flower yeah. cross. It's gonna be cool. So you'll be seeing more information about that. Basically, we're inviting you to bring up live, real, not fake, real flowers uh, that we're going to put in the cross, a big ten foot by six foot cross. Uh, it's a good photo opportunity for you and your family, but it'll be beautifully decorated. You can stick your flower in there, get a picture. Yeah, just help celebrate it's the pretty. resurrection of Jesus. It's pretty. So anyway, All right. you got anything else? No, man, I'm excited. I love, I mean, I just, I'm, in, I'm enjoying the study of Mark. I'm enjoying yeah. the things that, I mean, we're all learning. I'm learning as I'm researching it and going, okay, I didn't know that before. Yep. You know, so when people come up to me and they say, wow, I didn't know that. I go, yeah, I didn't either until last week. <laughs> yeah, join know, the club. I was working on this join passage. So yeah. again, man, that's the beauty of it. Just beggars telling other beggars where to get the bread we mm -hmm. found. So it's fun. Anyway, all right, cool. Hope Thanks, you have a great man. week. Hope you don't have astigmatism.
Same. I have an eye doctor appointment after this. That's what he's yeah. talking about. I'm going to there now. Going so. there now. How many fingers am I holding up? 17. I think you're good. All right. Have a great week. See you guys.